位同学，大家好，很高兴大家今天收看我们的节目。今天我们要教的是第三讲，第三讲要讲的是 introductory paragraph， 是导言段落。今天很高兴的邀请到了 Taylor 老师。Hello, everybody. I am Taylor. 而且呢，我们也邀请到两位同学，一位是 Tiffany 同学。Hi, 大家好，我是 Tiffany。一位是 Laura 同学。Hi, I'm Laura. 好，那我们今天就开始来教我们的第三章。In this chapter, we will look more closely at the construction of an introduction paragraph. 我们在这一章呢，主要呢是要仔细的探讨导言段落的结构。While we did discuss this in the previous chapter, we're going to look at these in a little bit closer detail. 之前呢，我们是有讨论到导言段落，但是呢，在这一章呢，我们会更仔细的讨论它的细节。Are you ready to begin? 大家准备好了吗 ？Yes. 好了。At this point, you should already have your topic selected and narrowed down, and a basic outline for what information will appear in your paragraph. Now, we have our topic selected and narrowed down, and we have our topic selected and narrowed down. Now, we have our topic selected and narrowed down, and we have our topic selected and narrowed down. Now, we have our topic selected and narrowed down, and we have our topic selected and narrowed down. Now, we have our topic selected and narrowed down, and we have our topic selected and narrowed down. 这样的写作模式，我们也会运用到内文的段落以及结论的段落上。We will begin by talking about the thesis statement. It is the most important part of your introduction, if not the entire essay. 我们呢要开始讨论我们的主旨的陈述。主旨的陈述呢是这一一篇文章，或者呢是一个导言的段落上面非常重要的一个部分。The thesis should clearly and precisely tell the reader. Exactly what they're going to read in the rest of the essay. If this information is not very clear, it can be very confusing, and your essay will appear incoherent and disorganized. 主旨呢，应该能够清晰并且简单地告诉读者这篇文章的内容到底在讲述些什么。假如呢，这个讯息呢会使读者困扰的话呢，那你的文章就会显得组织不是那么的完善。Only after you have your thesis statement prepared should you begin forming a hook. And any background information. 只有写完了主旨之后呢，才能够写谢旨，还有背景资讯的部分。So what does a thesis actually consist of? It's really no different than the topic sentences you should already be familiar with. The thesis statement should include the topic and the controlling idea. 那主旨呢是由什么组成的呢？主题句。跟主题句呢是一样的，你应该对主题句的写法已经很熟悉了。主旨的陈述呢，应该包含主题以及概念的部分。Let's take a look at the example thesis sentence from the writing model. Most people tend to spend more money online due to shipping costs and discount promotions. 让我们来看看范例的主旨句子。大部分的人呢，倾向于因为运费以及折扣的优惠，所以会花更多的钱在线上购物。This is a good example of a very clear and easy to understand thesis sentence. The topic is spending more money online, and ideas are shipping costs and discount promotions. This sentence is very clear and easy to understand. The topic is spending more money online, and ideas are shipping costs and discount promotions. It is these two ideas that we will explain further in the body paragraphs. 就是这两个概念。等一下呢，我们会在内文的段落中做进一步的解释。Um, I have a question. I have seen some essays that don't mention the controlling ideas. They just say for these reason or by following these steps. Did did they do it incorrectly? 就是我有看过一些文章上面并没有概念，他们只会说，嗯、um, ，因为这些理由或者是由下列的步骤，这样子的写作方法是错误的吗 ？That's a great observation. No, it's not incorrect. Sometimes the author will choose to frame their controlling ideas with the two you mentioned, or even there are two or three causes, and then their topic. 你观察到的是非常的好的，这些呢并不是错误的。有时候作者的除除了你上面说到的那两种方法之外，也会有其他的方法，像是这件事情有两个或三个因素。This is perfectly acceptable. However, in order to make sure essays remain clear and coherent, with your first few essays, we recommend directly stating your controlling ideas for the time being. 
这是可以接受的。然而呢，因为我们的是刚开始练习写作，为了要保持我们的文章清晰，我们还是建议同学们呢，在这个阶段呢，先把你的控制概念去写出来。Many students want to introduce their topic or the thesis by saying, "I would like to introduce the topic," or "Now I will talk about my topic." 很多学生呢，想要用以下的句子来写他的主旨或是主题句，例如他会说啦。我想要介绍的主题是，或者是他会说，现在我要说的主题是。Can you tell me why these don't work? 大家能不能想出来这两个句子为什么不大好呢？嗯、mm, ，Well, it mentions the topic, but there's no controlling idea. 因为我觉得他提到了主题，可是没有说到控制的概念。You're absolutely right. Uh, without the controlling idea, we won't know what the author will say about it.、Uh, if we take the example of online shopping, they could talk about why people like online shopping or why companies such as Amazon and PC Home have become so big. 你说的很好。没有了控制概念呢，我们并不知道这个作者他想要说的是关于主题的什么。就例如同学呢刚刚提到的线上购物这个例子，我们也可以讨论为什么人们喜欢线上购物，或者是说为什么像亚马逊啊，或是 PC Home 啊这样的大公司可以变得如此的蓬勃发展。After forming our thesis sentence, we should begin our paragraph with a hook. A hook is a sentence or a couple of sentences designed to catch the reader's attention. You want the reader to take an interest in what you have to say. 在写完了主旨的句子之后呢，应该要开始为我们的段落呢做一个谢字。一个谢字呢，就是一个句子或是一些的句子。它的目的呢是要吸引读者的眼球。你想要读者呢对你想要说的东西是感兴趣的。This is especially important in newspapers and online articles because many of them want to interest the reader and ensure they will read the whole thing. If the first few sentences don't appear interesting, readers may choose to skip the essay or article and read something else. 这个呢，在线上呢，或是报纸啊这种文章上面，尤其是非常重要的，因为呢，他们呢必须要确保读者会读完整篇文章。假如刚开始的几句话呢，并不能够吸引读者的兴趣呢，那这个读者呢，可能就会跳过你这篇文章，或者是呢，去读其他的文章了。Let's look at the example of two possible sentences in the book. Fast food is popular, but not very healthy. And the second sentence: We all love fast food, but it's slowly killing us from the inside out. Which one sounds more interesting to you? Now, we will give an example. Fast food is popular, but not very healthy. Or we all love fast food, but it is slowly killing us from the inside out. 你们觉得这两个句子哪一个对你是比较有吸引力的呢 ？Definitely, it's the second one. 当然是第二句。I agree with her. 我蛮同意她的。Uh, can you tell me what makes it a better hook? 那你能不能告诉我说为什么它能比较吸睛呢 ？Um, I'm not sure actually, but killing us from the inside out seems more powerful than unhealthy. 我觉得就是像说从内而外杀死我们，听起来好像比不健康还要更有力。And you would be absolutely correct. Most people know that fast food is unhealthy, but the words "killing us from the inside out" is much stronger and vivid than unhealthy. 这是对的，因为我们大家都知道，素食呢是不健康的，但是从内而外的把我们杀死，哇，听起来是比不健康要强烈而且鲜明的这种字眼。Besides strong language, there are a few other ways we can hook a potential reader. The first one is to start with a question to get the reader thinking. 除了使用这些强烈的语言之外呢，也有一些其他的方式可以吸引读者，像是用一个问句来开始。那这样呢，就可以吸引读者去思考这个问题。You can begin with a quotation or even an anecdote. Better yet, say something controversial or very surprising. 可以怎么做呢？你可以用一段名人说过的话，或者呢是你可以用一段逸文，或者是一些有争论性的，或者是非常令人讶异的一些事情来做你的开始。Writing hooks may seem difficult at first, but with a little practice and reading other examples, you will slowly start getting the idea. 写一个吸睛的话题呢，在刚开始的可能是非常困难的，但是练习久了之后呢，再加上。
读读其他的例子呢，你慢慢的就会知道要怎么做了。How about the writing model? What sort of hook does it use? Too tired after work to go shopping? Shop online. Can't find what you need at the store? Shop online. 那我们现在来看看我们这个范例，我们的范例呢，用什么样的方法来做吸金的动作呢？上班之后去逛街太累，上线购物，在店面里面找不到你想要的东西，上线去购物。This student used a question to hook the reader. In fact, they went a little further. They used a question and answer format and did it twice. In this specific example, the short answer "shop online" told us what the topic of the essay is. 这篇文章呢，使用了一个问题来吸引读者。事实上呢，他做的是更进一步的，他使用了一个问题，而且还有回答的这样的模式，而且做了两次。这样的特别的例子里面呢，在这个简单的回答“线上购物”，就告诉我们这篇文章的主题是什么，就是线上购物。After the hook comes the background information. At this point, we want to give the reader some information that might be needed to understand the topic. In the context you are writing about. 接着呢，我们要告诉读者背景的讯息。为了让读者呢了解你要告诉他们的主题以及内容，那你需要给读者一些背景的讯息。Remember to keep your audience in mind. While you may be very familiar with the subject, your reader may not be. 记得呢，我们得先了解一下我们的读者。我们呢？可能呢，对一个主题是非常的了解，但是我们的读者可能不像我们这么了解这个主题。For example, if you're writing about social media like Facebook or Instagram, and someone in an older generation will read it, they may have heard of it, but they may not actually know anything about、uh, the social media or even how the younger generation uses it. 举例而言呢，我们可能会写一些有关于社交媒体啊，像是脸书啦、啊，或者像是 I G 啊这样的东西。那对于比较年长的世代的人，读到这篇文章的时候，他们可能都没有听过脸书是什么。那他们可能也有听过，但是他们并不知道这样是什么样的东西。那年轻的世代呢，都是怎么样的用这些的社交媒体的 ？The last thing we will include in an introduction is an opinion, knowing how the writer feels about their subject. Will help us better understand the points they are trying to express. 最后一件事呢，要包括在导言段落里面的呢是意见，知道作者呢对于这个主题的想法，可以让我们更加的了解作者要表达的是什么。It is equally important that you include your opinion as well. It can be stated directly in the thesis statement, or stated directly or indirectly in the hook or background information. 同样的，你也应该把你的意见呢写在文章里面。你可以很直接、很明白的写在主旨的部分，当然你也可以比较间接的写在谢子的部分或在背景知识里面。In cases where the essay should contain unbiased research and ideas, such as a compare and contrast essay, opinions are often left to the very last paragraph, where it becomes part of the author's final remarks. 有一些文章呢，它的目的是要显示你非常的公正。那是一种研究，像是这样子呢，比较性，或者是一种比较性的文章，这样子呢，我们可以把我们的意见放在最后一段里面，变成评论。To figure out the author's opinion, we must look to see whether they discuss the topic using positive or negative words. In the book, there's a list of common words used to help us figure out the author's opinion. Such positive words include advantage, beneficial, or helpful. While a negative opinion is expressed with disadvantage, harmful, or useless. 为了要理解作者的意见呢，就看看他们讨论的时候选择的正面的还是反面的字词。那我们在书中呢有一个列表，那这张表呢可以我们帮助我们分析到作者这些正面的字。正面的字包括什么呢？有利的、利益、有帮助的。那负面的字呢是什么呢？像是不利的、有害的、无用的。我们在这个表格里面呢，都有它的对照。比如说 ，positive 上面的就是正面的 ，negative 呢就是背面的、负面的，这是负面的意思。那 advantage、positive、beneficial、helpful、useful、valuable 这些字呢，在我们看来都是怎么样？都是正面的字。那哪些是负面的字呢？像右边这些负面的字，比如说 negative 就是负面的 ，disadvantage 就是坏处 ，harmful 有害的 ，unhelpful。无意的 
useless 无用的 ，unfortunate 不幸的，这些呢都是负面的字。Let's look at the examples. Do you think they are positive or negative? The rise of technology has been greatly beneficial for our society. 让我们看一下下面的这些例子。你认为这些是正面的还是负面的？科技的兴起对于我们的社会有很大的益利益。That's definitely a positive opinion. 那是一个正面的意见。Uh, how do you know? 你是怎么知道的呢 ？Um, because they said beneficial. 因为有他有提到有益的。That's right. Let's try one more. Pollution has been shown to negatively affect health and memory. 那好，我们再试一题哦。污染已经对我们的健康显现出负面的影响。Negative. They said negatively affect. 嗯，是负面的，因为他们提到是负面的影响。That's also correct. 非常的好。If you have no more questions about this introduction paragraph, we will move on to our grammar point. 假如呢，现在大家呢没有问题的话，我们就要继续讲到我们文法的重点，就是平行结构。Parallel structure means keeping a pattern of words grammatically consistent. This gives a balanced form to the sentences. We often see this when writing two or more ideas in a row. 平行结构的意思呢，是字的排列要在文法结构上要一致。这在这个写句子的时候呢，可以保持一个平衡的形式。我们通常在连续写一个或是更多句子的时候，通常会用到这种写作的方法。We will often use parallel structure for our controlling ideas. Each controlling idea should be listed grammatically the same as the others. 通常呢，我们会用平行结构在我们的控制概念里面。每一个控制概念呢，都应该有同样的文法结构来陈列。For example, if your first controlling idea begins with a gerund, that's a verb with an ing, then each of your controlling ideas should also begin with a gerund. 举例而言呢，假如呢，我们的第一个控制概念是用分词开始的话。那分分词就是一个动词加上 ing 的形式。那么其他的控制概念也应该用分词来开始。If we look at the writing example, we can see the controlling ideas, shipping costs, and discount promotions. Both costs and promotions are nouns, while shipping and discount are adjectives associated with those nouns. If it is the fact that each idea is expressed in noun form that we should keep consistent. 看到我们在写作范例上所写的，运费成本跟折扣促销这两个都是名词 ，cost 跟 promotion 这两个名词的前面加上 shipping 以及 discount 这两个形容词，所以 shipping cost 跟 discount promotions 这两个对比呢，就排比的非常的好。If the other wanted, they could have expressed the controlling ideas using gerunds. For example, most people tend to spend more money online. Due to making shipping costs worthwhile and fulfilling discount promotion requirements. 假如作者想要的话呢，也可以用分词的方法来做排比句，加上 making 跟 fulfilling 这两个字就可以变成分词喽。We have kept the controlling ideas parallel with making and fulfilling. Please note that other words may be needed to ensure the controlling idea is expressed clearly. 请注意到，有时候呢，我们也可能会加上其他的字来确保我们的控制概念表达得很清楚。The book gives us a few examples of parallelism outside of controlling ideas. 这个课本里面呢，有更多的例子来告诉我们排比的用法。Take for instance, I like singing and dancing. Notice how both singing and dancing are gerunds. 举例而言呢。我喜欢唱歌跟跳舞，在这里面呢，唱歌跟跳舞就是分词。He speaks quietly and slowly, makes use of two adverbs. A common mistake in parallel structure might be something along the lines of "Tomorrow I will go shopping, to eat, and visit family." 他安静而缓慢地说话。这句话呢，就使用了两个副词。在下面的句子里面，有一个普通的错误：明天我将要去购物、吃东西，还有拜访家人。The verb "go shopping," while two words, is considered one verb, which begins with an infinitive verb. "Visit" is also an infinitive verb, 
and is parallel to go shopping. Both verbs are in their basic form with no endings. But we have a problem with to eat, which is an infinitive verb preceded by to. This is not parallel with the other verbs in the sentence. The correct answer would be, tomorrow I will go shopping, eat, and visit family. 这些句子里面, go shopping是原形动词开始, to eat是不定词开始, visit family又是原形动词开始, 为了要一致呢,应该要改成, 明天我们将会去购物, 吃东西, 还有拜访家人, 都是用原形动词开始. Try one yourselves. How would you make this sentence parallel? He spoke loudly and with passion. 试着分析下面的句子吧, 如何才能使句子更具结构性? 他大声且激情地说话, um, we should change with passion, is that right? 我们应该要更正 with passion, 对不对? Uh, that's correct. 是的. Well, if loudly is an adverb, then with passion should also be an adverb. He spoke loudly and passionately. Um, 如果 loudly 是副词, 但接着 with passion 是片语, 所以应该要把 he 把这个句子改成, he spoke loudly and passionately, ma? Uh, that's right. Good job. 很好, 说得很好. 那我们现在呢, 就请Taylor老师呢, 跟两位同学做一些简单的练习哦. Okay, now we'll go ahead and uh, do some practice with everything we have learned in this chapter. To start with, let's talk about thesis statements. Uh, I will give you a thesis statement, and you have to tell me if it is a good thesis statement, or if it is too broad or too narrow, okay? Or if there's something missing, such as a topic or a controlling idea, okay? Laura, we'll start with you first. Okay. Um, the, t the thesis sentence is, uh, now I will introduce basketball. Now I will introduce basketball. Um, I think this is too broad. Because it doesn't have a control idea. That's absolutely correct. So we need a controlling idea. Um, just tell the person the topic and what you're going to explain about it. Could you take that sentence and change it and give a more specific and narrower topic sentence? Mm, I want to introduce about how to shoot better for basketball. Okay, very good. Much better than the previous one, but remember, we don't want to say, I will introduce. Okay. Usually we leave those words out. Just actually introduce it with the topic and then the coordinating or the controlling idea. So how to, how to shoot better when playing basketball? Is that correct? That is correct. Much, much better. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, you're welcome. Tiffany, uh, now one for you. Okay. Now, Tiffany, can you take the same idea of the topic basketball and create a topic sentence? So, Tiffany, topic sentence? Ma? Mm, um, so, can I say um, I want to introduce the reason why I love basketball as my thesis statement? Uh, good cry, not quite. Uh, again, as we mentioned before with Laura, you don't want to actually use the words, I want to introduce. So, we are saying that I want to introduce this sentence. It's not good. So, what you want to say is for the basketball, and then um, give some a specific answer as to uh, why you're talking about basketball. Yes. Can you try it again? So, can I say, um, the reason why I love basketball are as follows. Is that a good thesis statement? Um, that is okay. Mm -hmm. as, as we mentioned before, we want to be careful with uh, as follows or uh, for these reasons. More advanced writers can use them very well. So we recommend in the beginning to actually say what those reasons are. Can you try that again? So can you like give me a better revision of, the, of, the, of the, this thesis statement? Sure. For this, we can say, basketball is my favorite sport because it is lots of fun and helps me reduce stress. Okay, that's clear. Yep. All right, uh, we've got one more sentence you guys can try. Um, 
This essay is about smartphones. 好，现在呢，我们又有另外一个例子，我们要问同学。This essay is about smartphone. Um, I guess we cannot use this essay, and um, it also does not have a controlling idea. Okay. 就是它不可以再用 this essay， 然后它也缺了一个控制概念。Yep, very good. That's exactly correct. Uh, Tiffany, we'll go back to you. One more for you. Yoga is a fantastic way to relieve stress. Yoga is a very good way to relieve stress. I think this is a positive thesis statement, and it's pretty clear. You're absolutely right. It is very clear. Can you tell me what the topic of that sentence is? Can you tell me what the topic of that sentence is? It's yoga. And the controlling idea? It's how to help us relieve stress. Very good. That's exactly correct. All right. One last exercise we're now going to do is parallel structure. So I'm each going to give you one sentence. 好，接下来呢，我们要做的呢是平行结构的练习。I'll give you a sentence, and you need to tell me how to fix it. Okay. So, Laura, your sentence is: Water and the food are necessary for survival. Um, it should be water and food because we don't need the, the in front of food. 应该是 water and food， 因为我们不要多一个定冠词。Yep, very good. All right, Tiffany, for yours.、Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy swimming and sports. Um, I think we should rephrase it into I enjoy swimming and playing sports. That's absolutely correct. Yep, we want to keep those both gerunds if they're both being ings.、Mm, yes. All right. This is about wraps up our chapter on writing introduction paragraphs. Remember, the most important part of the essay is a strong thesis statement. Without it, the essay falls apart. And remember to keep your controlling ideas parallel. This one is about the writing introduction paragraphs. 总之呢，请大家记住，文章中呢最重要的而强有强而有力的是这个主旨的陈述，没有了它呢，这篇文章的结构就瓦解了。并且记住，在控制概念的句子中要保持平行结构。Additionally, we want to hook the reader by asking a question using a quote or anecdote or something controversial. This should be followed by background information pertinent to understanding the topic. 此外呢，我们希望借由提问有关的问题、名言、轶事，或是其他有争议性的问题来吸引读者的注意。随后呢，应提供相关的背景资讯。Finally, we want to express our opinion with our choice of positive or negative associated words. 最后呢，我们就会选择正向或是负向的关联字汇呢，来表达我们自己的意见。很高兴大家新收看了今天的节目。今天呢，学到的这些东西，希望大家都练习的。而且呢，平行结构的部分也是一个写作很重要的技巧，希望大家都能够多多练习平行结构的写作。谢谢大家的收看。